Do you know people who are traditional conservative Christians, or maybe you are one yourself? And what do you think is the Christian opinion about wealth, prosperity, money, this whole topic of having things? Have you also heard that the Bible is supposed to teach that people should be rather poor and humble instead of being rich? And then the church, church people, Christians refer to this one incident where Jesus met a young rich guy and this guy wanted to follow Jesus. And after some discussion, Jesus said to him, if you really want to follow me, give away everything what you have. Give it to the poor. And then you come back and follow me. And then it says, the guy went back to his place and felt very sad because he was rich. And that means, people believe that way, that if you're rich, you cannot be a Christian, not a good Christian. If you're rich, you cannot follow Jesus. If you're rich, it's all kind of with negative connotations. Sometimes people even say, well, Jesus was not rich. He didn't have nothing, and he was encouraging people to follow him. Well, this is not true. Jesus was rich. He was supported by the richest people in the country. He had a very expensive piece of cloth. He had very rich friends. He didn't have a house, but that was his ministry, not to have a house and travel around. A lot of people believe that because Jesus was crucified, that you and I have to be crucified. No, because he was crucified, you and I don't have to suffer his suffering. But let's come back to money and prosperity and business. In the Old Testament, the first half of the Bible, the Old Jewish Bible, it is also called, that talks a lot about business. And God always gave two options. He said in different places, <clears throat> especially when it is in the old days when he talks about law, <clears throat> excuse me, one way is the way of obedience, following all the rules and laws. And God says, if you follow that way, you shall have abundant blessings, overflowing, everything what you need and beyond, everything what you can even imagine and beyond. You shall be prosperous, very prosperous. But for that, it is required that you do certain things and don't do bad things. And the other way is the way of not being blessed, the way of curse, worshiping other gods, idols, idolatry, um, maltreating people, and doing all sorts of bad things, not following the rules, not following the law, rejecting everything. And then God says, if you go that way, what you will have is disaster, illness, catastrophes, bad things will happen to you. This way and that way. God says you have the free choice. You have the option to choose. What do you think God wanted the people to choose for, to opt for? Of course, for the way of prosperity. And the whole Bible is full of that. It is only in some passages in the New Testament, especially from Paul, where you could think that the Bible does not support prosperity. Yes, money is a temptation. Having suddenly a lot of money can tempt you to do bad things with it. But so you can do with everything. Here in Germany, it, says, it is said that money ruins the character, makes people, gives people a bad character. You see that sometimes people get a million, become a millionaire by winning the lottery. Suddenly they have so much money. And that and then they turn to be bad. It's not the money what turns them bad. You know, these kind of situations, trouble, hardship, stress, sudden wealth, all of these things 
They just reveal the real character. What is in reality there? Doesn't do any harm, doesn't do any bad. It's just showing what is there already. I always get fascinated when sometimes, sometimes when I, in, in traditional churches, I can hear preachings about the danger and the risk of being rich. That people should not pursue money, but be humble and things like that. But then at the end of the church service, they ask, now we have the collection and we need money for this project, for that project, for, the, for fixing the roof of the church building or for whatever, to invest in something, whatever is needed. So on the one side, they say, money is bad. On the other side, they say, oh, we need the money. And <laughs> I always imagine if there was a millionaire sitting in the crowd, in the group, in the assembly, listening to the story on the preaching that money is really bad. And in the end, they come to him and ask him, oh, can you donate a lot of money because we need it? You know, isn't that ridiculous sometimes? Whatever you believe about money, the fact is money is in the, in the world, in this financial world, in this material world, it is very, very important. I'm not saying you should store the money. You should collect all the money and keep it for yourself. No, money needs to be circulated. If you give it away, it comes back. The more you give away, the more it will come back. There is a statistic, actually, which shows that if people give money away, none of these people have actually lost anything. In the end, in the long run, they get more back than the, what, what, what they have given. So if you, if you have a lot of money, if you earn a lot of money, it is good. Be grateful for this. Because the more money you earn, the more money you have, the more good things you can do. I was in a situation where I thought, my goodness, if I had the money now, I could help this poor old woman to have a nice bed. She was struck down by a stroke. And she needed certain things which I couldn't provide for. It was the wife of a friend of mine. So money means food. Money means showing love by giving presents and gifts. Money means you can support people, you can support a project, you can support a relief fund, you can support a church, you can support people who really need the money. So do not belittle money. <clears throat> money is really important. And if you have the chance to earn more, if you have the chance to have better business, go for it. You know, a little child always wants to grow, do things better. If they start running, they want to run better. If they learn the bicycle riding, they want to do it better. If they do any kind of sports, they want to do it better. I often go to the playground nearby here and I see all the skaters and people who um, work on this uh, kick, what is it called, kickboard, this little, you know, yeah, I think it's a kickboard, skateboard, and the other things, inliners, and they improve and improve and improve and practice, practice, practice. This is what you should do with your business to earn more money. So you can do more, help more, be more. I encourage you to strive for bigger businesses. Think big. This is, I'm 100% convinced, it is the will of God, the will of universe, the will of whatever you believe in, that you improve, increase, and grow. You grow so that you become a bigger person, a stronger person, more into your own potential. You become more in the likeness of God because he created you as being His in his image. Do never and not anyone, do not allow anyone to talk you out of your success, to talk you out of your dreams, to talk you out of thinking big. Never listen to people who say, oh, stay where you are, be satisfied. No, satisfaction is the beginning of death because you don't grow anymore, you don't move forward. You should be happy with what you have, but don't be satisfied. Grow more. 
The more you have, the more you earn, the more you can do. And that is good. You are a created being from a creator. And he created you so that you can be a creator. Help others. Help others to you know, get more into their potential. With your money and your earnings and what you, with your business, you can help to make the world a better place. Certainly your world, people around you, you have contact to so many people and their world, you can make a much better world. So don't think this is not good. Be proud and be happy and be grateful for what you have and what you did achieve and try to do more. This is what God wants you to do, and he will certainly bless you in doing that. And this is what I wish for you.